let's jump right into it then. Let's let's talk about um, Black Family Apparel, uh, what it is, and why you started it. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you for asking. Um, Black Family Apparel is my apparel company. It actually is the apparel arm to the movement that I started about seven months ago called Black Fathers Now. But um, but Black Family Apparel, in essence, is a clothing line for everybody, for kids, for dads, for moms, for, you know, for married couples, and pretty much anybody. I mean, from birth, I mean, until we have um, we have things for, you know, for you to wear and put on. The concept behind Black Family Apparel is bringing unique concepts and unique imagery to the world that helps to celebrate the nuances of the black family. And so what we tend to do is uh, for the imagery component, you know, we'll take an image that basically kind of busts the stereotype. So, for instance, we have a line called the uh, Yes Boys Read. And the Yes Boys Read line is basically focused on a little boy of color sitting on top of a basketball reading a book. It kind of busts the stereotypes because a lot of times people automatically assume that, you know, black boys just play ball. This kind of shows black boys sitting on the ball but reading. And so it's just, that's just an example of some of the, you know, the imagery that's uh, exemplified with black family apparel. But once again, it's about helping to just celebrate the nuances and celebrate the black family itself. Yeah, it's awesome. It's it's definitely, you know, I've gone through it all and taken a good look. It's a, uh, you guys are definitely doing, you're doing great work and it's, it's a message I think that's really needed. Um, what, what do you think in terms of like society and, and trends? Like is, you know, there's a, there's a, it's an unfortunate thing, but you know, especially the, you know the pundits on uh, um, on the on the radio and such are you know when they talk about black families and and the fatherlessness issue and 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 crime and that kind of thing. Do you think that it's trending like like the, the, the your messaging is helping move that needle so that that's not the crap they're talking about? You know, you, you know the thing is, um, this kind of dives into a deeper issue that a lot of people don't really want to jump into, but. The thing is, when you really look at trends or you look at, you know, statistics and all of that, a lot of times statistics are put out there with angles, right? Someone is trying to create a particular narrative because if you really take a step back and look at it, the numbers across most cultural lines are pretty comparable. But when you just take one part or you look at a one socioeconomic group of a particular demographic, then sometimes the numbers tend to skew in a way that aren't necessarily favorable. One of the things that I will say is this, if you look at any culture, if you look at any group, any race, any socioeconomic group, what you'll find is you have a wide array or vast, uh, basically you have a vast number of folks in a lot of different buckets, but it's all about what people tend to highlight. And a lot of times, if you don't take time to expose yourself to people outside of your world or outside of your particular culture or outside of your race or outside of your, of your belief system, what you tend to do is formulate an opinion of them just based on what someone else tells you because you've never experienced interactions with them yourself. So it's kind of the same thing. Like I'm a black man and I live in, you know, Knoxville, Tennessee, which is in the southeastern part of the United States. And the experiences that I have growing up, you know, are isolated to me. So therefore, if I don't take myself outside of my bubble and expose myself to people of different beliefs, from different backgrounds, from different cultures, from different parts of the world. When we travel internationally, we try to dive into culture to understand people and understand them and understand their nuances so that we then don't fall into that same trap of stereotyping all of one person or all of one people and broad, brush, uh, broad stroke them and say that everybody falls into this bucket. And I think truthfully, when it comes to the pundits and you know the things that are put out there, a lot of times that's what ends up happening you don't spend time with people who are different from yourself. So therefore you take one example and make that example, the total entirety of a people, which is not the truth, nor is it fair. Yeah. So, um, I I don't, did that explain it? In, that explains from, it. Uh, I, I definitely agree with you. I think that, uh, that, uh, it's, that's when you hundred percent hit the mark. I mean, I know you're an intelligent guy cause we've talked before, so I'm, I'm glad you, uh, mm -hmm. we went down there. Um, Last thing you the last, you know we talked before and you had mentioned you you came up with this metaphor about music and kind of the, yes, yes. how you how you target your audience and I, I want to yes. get that out of you because I thought I really thought that was brilliant and uh, you know I, I'd like I want to make sure that's included so maybe could you run through that yeah. again? 
Yeah, no problem, no problem. You know, the the reason, because uh, when you and I spoke before, a lot of times, you know, I get questions about, you know, why is it that you're focusing on black family apparel? Or why is it that, you know, your movement is black fathers now? Why not all fathers now? Or why not, you know, just family apparel, so to speak? And the thing is, when you're positioning something or when you're putting something out there, you know, you want to be specific in your approach. Now, if I'm being specific in my approach or targeted in my approach, that does not mean that I'm not looking to benefit other people. So the analogy that I gave you before was when someone is making a rap album or a hip-hop album, a lot of times the content that's being presented in that particular genre is geared towards maybe the urban demographic or people who would identify with the urban demographic. But if you step back and kind of pan out and look at the view of who purchases it, and who listens to the music, a lot of people from all kinds of cultures and backgrounds listen to hip hop, even though the targeted message or the information or the, you know, the, 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 um, the theme of what's talked about is specifically targeted at the urban demographic. The same thing can be said for country music. You know, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is not far from Nashville, which is basically country music capital of the world. And if you think about a lot of the lyrics and a lot of the themes and a lot of the you know, the content that's put out for country music is geared towards kind of the rural, uh, you know, country lifestyle, so to speak. And so they're not necessarily talking to the urban demographic, though people from all backgrounds might get something from country music. So when I think about Black Family Apparel and Black Fathers Now, yes, I'm speaking specifically to Black Fathers. That does not mean other fathers and other people, because there's a lot of women that listen to the podcast and, and all of that. There's a lot of people that gain stuff from it, even though the, the tone that I use is specifically talking to other black men. Other people can gather and get, uh, garner information or garner uh, insight from what's being talked about. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I can now that I've listened to your stuff and, I, and I've gotten into it, I can, you know, I'm a, I'm a white guy and I, I benefit from from reading and, and uh, taking in your content. So uh, that's, that's the proof, right? But, um, awesome. that's, that's awesome, man. I, I appreciate you connecting with me. Uh, well, uh, we're definitely going to get, get on some stuff in the future. Cause I, I love what you're doing. Also. Hey, same here, my man, anything I can ever do for you and you know, the no deadbeat society or whatever, y'all don't hesitate to reach out and let me know, man. I'm, I'm always down. For sure, man. I, I appreciate this. Thanks brother. No doubt, my man. Take care.